Hey, 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 it's Vlogging Day 586. <laughs> Paris n'importe où, bras, bras sur, en j'entends des chansons, bras de sur, de Paris n'importe où. Good morning, it's Friday, which means today is French Friday, and today I'm gonna to be going up the Eiffel Tower because why the heck not? The Eiffel Tower is, of course, the most visited site in the world, so it makes sense that you might wanna know what the heck is going on before you get here. And I thought, well, it's been a long time since I've been up the Eiffel Tower myself. Why don't we go and see what it's like? Things have changed a lot since the last time I went up. Security's a lot tighter, and I have no idea what else is going on inside, so I figured, let's get in line, go up the Eiffel Tower, and we'll just see what happens. First things first. Security. We're gonna have to get through security down here, which doesn't look too bad right now. I tried to get here early enough that the lines wouldn't be terrible. The Eiffel Tower opens at 9.30 in the morning and closes at 11. I was trying to get here before it opened, but I ended up going and having coffee with Bouchon, so here we go. We're getting here at, I think, at 10.15. But it's not that bad. You can see the line is pretty manageable, actually. Barely even curves once, so we'll see how long this takes us starting now. Took what, 15, 16 minutes? I don't know, I can't do math. Anyways, we are under the Eiffel Tower. This view right here used to require no security back when I lived here before, which is unfortunate that that has changed. It's incredible. And this was actually built to be the entrance to the World's Fair in what, 1889 by Gustav Eiffel's company, which he ended up fronting like half, more than half the money to build it himself and half the money for the company that would manage it later. And he got exclusive rights to it and all the money that it made for 20 years. I think it only took them 18 months to pay off all the construction costs. And so it's just like pure profit and just cream after that. But this view from underneath, well worth taking a look before you go up. And then, and then we'll go get tickets here. There are ticket offices at each of the pillars, and you'll see the symbols for stairs or for elevators. I'm going for stairs, at least to go up. The east ticket office on the southern pillar should do the trick here. You'll see right here, you got your east ticket office, but the southern pillar. So I'll bounce around through here, grab some tickets, and go up some stairs. Nineteen euros to go all the way to the top. It was only ten euros to the second story, but to go all the way up, you got to take an elevator, and it doubles the price. Right. Now I'm gonna be honest too. Now that you're this far in with me, this isn't my favorite view of the city by a long shot. I actually not a huge fan of the view from the Eiffel Tower, but maybe today will change my mind. We'll see. And I really wish I'd have brought my microphone. All right, one more security check there. And the security checks. We uh, will talk about my philosophy on uh, security checkpoints at some point, I'm sure. But in the meantime, up we go. I don't know how many stairs there are. Lots. I'll put them on the screen, I'm sure. But it's a good way to get a little bit of exercise, warm up. It is cold out here today, it's freezing. There is supposedly an ice rink right now on the first story, so we'll see if that's going. But when they originally built this place, it actually had a printing press, huge printing press. And they did all the maps, brochures, everything that you wanted to buy here that was printed was actually printed on location. Which, really cool, and uh, I imagine at the time was pretty mind-blowing. They also have all these handy historical signs along the way, so if you want to pretend that you're not out of breath, you're just stopping to read something, great way to do it. Alright, welcome to the first floor. Not a lot going on here, but this is probably my favorite floor for the view simply because you're still among the buildings of the city. The higher you get, the less definition and context you have. In the past, I haven't liked it as much. We'll see what happens today, but this is pretty cool. Very glad that I missed that longer line. That's like four times longer 
such a slow security line. Oh man. I want to check it out because I don't actually know for sure which floor the restaurant's on. I think it might be what's behind me, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So I'm going to do a little bit more exploring to see. I didn't see a nice rink walking around, but we'll, uh, we'll keep going and we're going to take the stairs up to the second floor. After that though, we have to take an elevator to the, the top. You can't hike that. Let's go. Oh yeah, here you go. Here's here's the restaurant just across the way. Also, this will give you a mild sense of vertigo if you're. Uh, it's unfortunate if you've been to Chicago at the Sears Tower and I think at the CN Tower actually in Toronto as well. They don't put anything on the ground, but. <laughs> I think we come ready for some exercise. It's actually a good pointer if you're gonna to come to Europe anyways is you should probably get into good walking shit because you're gonna end up walking a lot while you're here. All right, I stand corrected. The second floor is definitely a nicer view than the first, but I think this is as nice as it gets. We'll find out here in a second. There's a uh, gift shop on the second floor if you really need one. You know, though, you can always bargain your way down with the guys who are selling the Eiffel Towers and stuff on the ground. Depends on what you're looking to buy, I suppose, but. Uh, I, would, I don't know if I'd spend my money up here. Also, you can see the Statue of Liberty from up here. There she is at the end of that island. See her? She's a small version of the Statue of Liberty, but she's still free. We're almost above the smog up here. Almost. Not quite. I'm hoping once you get up to the top, we'll get some fresh air. That's like the number one benefit to coming up here. <laughs> Well, it's not a good day for time lapses up here. At least it's not windy. There are days up here where it is just destructively windy and you want to make sure that you dress appropriately. Like I'm, I'm bundled up for today and I'm actually feeling pretty good. And it was a good hike to get up here. A little bit of exercise. And the Champ de Mars is wrecked right now. Look at this. Between winter, like the smog and whatever construction they're doing down there looks like, looks like a war zone. So if you need a snack, it's actually warm in here too, which is nice. And there's Wi-Fi on the tower, which is handy if you don't have cell service. Yeah. So this level's where it's fun because you feel like you're still in the city, even though you're above the city. It's great. Once we get way up there, it's when it starts to feel like you lose all definition. A ridiculous amount of uncuttable line here. The air looks even worse from up here. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> wow. You can see the Louvre out there, sort of. And the air is bad today. You can see uh, Gustave's old apartment up here. And it's still, it was a little windy for a second there, but it's still wonderful up here right now. Not frozen, and I'm enjoying the view a lot more this time than I thought I was going to, for sure. I wish that you could actually see something. That'd be nice. But the angle itself is better than I remember. And since I can't get drone footage of the city, you know, legally, this is basically as good as that gets. 
there you have it. This was the tallest building in the world until they finished the Chrysler building, I think 41 years after building the Eiffel Tower. Pretty cool. And now that they have the antenna on top, it is taller than the Chrysler building by I think about five meters. So can't hold on to the titles forever. <laughs> I think they paint it once every seven years and it takes them something like 18 months for the team of like 10 people to do it. It's been painted five or six different colors over the years, but now it's always painted Eiffel Brown. It's like their own specific brown for the building, which, you know, brown works. Even though I only paid to take the stairs up, I can take the elevator down, which I'm gonna do after we take a shot of the Arc de Triomphe over here. Which you can mostly see now that we're back. Makes me wish I had a real lens. Anywho, on our way down. And there you have it. One of my favorite stories actually about the Eiffel Tower is during World War II they found out that Hitler wanted to go up to the top so they cut the cables to the elevators. So you had to walk every step of the way if you wanted to go up there. It's a little bit of French snark for you but I love this thing. It's so nice. Anyways, I hope you had a good time going up there with me. If you enjoyed this, I do random videos all the time about how to get around Paris, things to see. I also just live here and make a lot of videos. I make a video every day just about my life. Please just subscribe, stick around. No, I don't speak English, sorry. Uh, she's a pickpocket, so just be aware of those too. Leave a comment, like, you know, whatever you want. And, and now we'll get back to like, what little vlogging I'm gonna do for the rest of the day.